This is going to be part two uh, of the series of tutorials for explaining our uh, sidebar interface. In part one, we've seen an, a general overview and also we saw the explanation for the uh, HTML and the general structure. And now we're moving to the CSS, which of course is linked in the HTML in the head as we always, uh, you know, as exactly as we would expect it. And it's inside a folder called CSS, which later on, uh, of course, if the CSS is nested one level down in a folder, any links from CSS to the outside world will have to start with dot dot slash. We're going to see that. So let's go to the CSS. CSS starts with importing a Google font, something we have learned um, in previous lessons. Um, and I will repeat it briefly when I explain um, one of the things that you need to do for this lab is replace the Google font, which is relatively easy. It's, a, as a matter of fact, pretty easy. Then um, this is what I like to call my font bank. So I can copy these lines and uh, implement them anywhere that I want. Those are the Google fonts. Um, then regular stuff that we've seen a million times before, the resets, um, the overflow scrolling we've seen in the previous uh, application. Basically what it means is that when we scroll, uh, it will uh, respond to touch. So it will be like that uh, scrolling where you take off your finger and it keeps on scrolling a little bit. Uh, it will be only for uh, older versions of Chrome or Safari running on mobile devices. So, you know, for right now, if I took it out, nothing would change. It's not a, a, a very important line right now. Um, then a clear, which is a general clear for, you know, let's insert a comment here for terminating floats. Of course, floats are things that are floating side by side, and we want to make sure that after the last one, we start a new row. So then we will use like an empty div with that uh, clear. And that happens, I think, only once in this page. The body has a font and a background color, nothing special. Notice that the background color is gray, but we don't really see any of it when we look at the page. Why don't we see any of it? I don't see any, you know, gray background. I don't see it here. I don't see it here. This is going to be a different. This is not the, the this background. It's because it's covered with everything else. So even if I change it, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I change this to a shade of green, do I see any difference? Uh, actually, yeah, this is the color of the body. So I'll take this back. So the only thing we can see from the color of the body is what's behind the um, the nav. I didn't give it a different color. So everything else is covered. This is the, the body background. Uh, I'm going to change it back because I like this gray. Uh, then the mega wrapper, look at it. It couldn't be any more mega if, you know, uh, position fixed, which means it will never scroll up or down. It's fixed. It occupies from the top left width 100, height 100. If this could have been uh, 100 VW and uh, and 100 VH, it doesn't matter. Its parent is the whole body, so it takes up the whole viewport. The remember the mega wrapper is the whole thing. Inside the mega wrapper, there could definitely be some scrolling. Like for instance, if the background, let me do a save all. If there are more links than we have room, it will scroll. But notice how it's scrolling only on these. And if there's more content here, especially when we close, it will scroll this. But notice that when we scroll this up and down and we open the sidebar, the sidebar always opens at the top. Even when this is scrolled up and down, they're independent. But the mega wrapper is around all of them. Um, it's position fixed. It takes up the whole page. Everyone lives inside of it. 
Then I commented something, you know, like a section that I call the moving parts. The moving parts is everything has to do with what moves when I click this icon, which includes the icon itself. The sidebar is 300 pixels. I'm going to mark that as hot. because this is a very important number. In your assignment, you will have to change this to a different number. Uh, so you, you will look for any mention of 300 pixels and those are the numbers you're going to change. Height 100, so it simply occupies the whole, again, do save all, so it occupies the whole height of this, even when there's um, empty you know, when there's, you know, not enough room. Um, position fixed, so it doesn't scroll up and down. That way, even if we scroll up and down on the content, the interface always stays on top. Top left, top right. If I gave it a background color, and this is what I commented out, I think it illustrates its um, position better. So I'm going to uncomment it for a second and show you. This is, of course, red. So. What is the sidebar? The sidebar is whatever is red right now. That's the sidebar. Everything here, 100% height. Since I don't need it to have its own background color, it's going to take on the background color of the body. X overflow hidden and overflow Y scroll. What does that mean? If its contents are wider than can be contained, I don't want it to get actually wider. I want it to be hidden. Let me illustrate. For instance, what if one of the names of the links was not just a timeline, but timeline, blah, 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 really long. Save. Normally in HTML, that would make, it would force it to kind of break to the right. But in this case, because I told it to overflow hidden, actually it's wrapping here inside this box. Um, so this is what this is for. So going back to the CSS. Uh, same thing with overflow Y scroll. In other words, if the contents are bigger or taller than the box, then a scroll bar will appear. Let's see that. Now the contents fits just nicely. So the scroll bar is, you know, disabled. But if, for instance, it was a very small phone, scroll bar appears. So if the contents width-wise are too big, I don't want to see a scroll bar. But if the contents height-wise are too big, then I do want to see a scroll bar so I can, so I can reach all my links. Um, Z-index 3, which means it's not at the, on top of everything, but it's on top of at least, you know, the regular HTML. Then something we learned in the previous um, tutorial, which is the perspective. The perspective is where, how far we are in this imaginary camera that we have. Let me change it to some extreme numbers. If this was 4,000, then the whole perspective of the 3D folding would look different. It would look almost flat because it would look like we're very far away. Look at this. It would look almost like there's no 3D-ish to this. On the other hand, if I changed it to an extremely low number, remember low means extreme, means like, you know, my nose is buried in the screen. If it was 40 pixels, it would look so extreme, I'm not even sure what it would look like. See how extreme it looks? Kind of cool, actually. So the perspective is like, you know, how 3D-ish we want it to look. I just chose 400 because it looked good to me. But if you want to change it to something else, this is definitely, I'm actually going to change it back to 400 because this is a hot. It's one of the things that you need to change in the uh, assignment. The uh, instructions for how to do your lab are going to be in the last tutorial in this series. And marking things as hot is definitely going to help us find them. Uh, the transition is... Uh, 
for right now, not for everything, but only for things that have to do with transform, like sizes and so on. And this is, of course, the speed of the transition. This is also going to be hot. Something else that we can use in CSS is what's called a spring. Ease in out means it'll be slow in the beginning, fast in the middle, and slow at the end. And you can notice it. If I do this longer, let's say 2.5, Let's see if we can notice what's happening here. Of course, I will have to change this also in other uh, aspects of the interface, but look at this. One, slow. And again, look at this. It's going to be fast, slow, uh, sorry, slow in the middle, fast, and again in the end, slow. slow down towards the end. That's that ease in out. You have a few more options. We could do just ease in, ease out. Ease simply means slow. Ease in out means that it will slow down in the beginning and the end. It's nothing but an effect. I like it. The important thing is that if we choose such a duration and such a uh, spring that we coordinate it with other things, otherwise they will not move at the same time and it would look kind of odd. So I'm going to mark this again as hot. It's one of the things we're going to have to change. Um, then this is the sidebar. Notice our three style strategy, which we've used so many times before. One style that's general for the sidebar always. Let's call it in general, always. Then look at the next two styles, because those are really important in uh, the whole structure of this thing. Who are we talking about? Sidebar. What we're talking about is when sidebar is a child of something else that has the class SB hidden. Who is that someone? It's the mega wrapper. So the comment I'm going to write here is sidebar when its ancestor has the class SB hidden, which is the default. In the beginning, it's hidden. When the sidebar notices, hey, you know, mega wrapper, are you hidden or are you showing? And the mega wrapper is going to tell it, oh, I'm in the mode of hidden. Then it's transform is going to be translate 3D, 300 pixels. Translate 3D is like translate X, Y, and Z all in one line. So this is X, this is Y, this is Z. It's 300 pixels minus, which means it's 300 pixels to the left of the screen. Imagine it basically, let me file, save all. Um, it's 300 pixels wide, but it's not showing because it's 300 pixels to the left of the screen. If I made it a little less, it would start showing. If I said, oh, only let's say negative 100, then it would still be off screen, but not completely. And did I save it? I think the reason it's not showing is because other things are preventing it. Yeah, you can see that it's not folding correctly on the side because of the translate. So what I would put here is hot. Hot make same as sidebar width. The idea here is that this is like, if it's a door, this is what it, you know, rotates around. Then, of course, if the sidebar is showing, so the comment I would write here is sidebar when its parent tells us, oh, we're all showing.
then of course it's going to go back to 0000, zero, zero, zero which means it will show at the top left of the screen um, so when it's showing it's right here parent hidden parent showing the idea is that all of these children are relying on their parent, which is the mega wrapper, to tell it, are we all showing or are we all hiding? As we will see about a tutorial from now, in the JavaScript, which is the shortest JavaScript you've ever seen, all we're doing is telling the mega wrapper, are you showing or are you not showing? That's it. Add and take away the class showing. Um, I can even show you that in Firefox that all of this movement is based on the fact when I inspect that the mega wrapper has the class right now SB hidden and look at what happens when I click this menu. Nothing else changes. It gets the class SB showing. It doesn't take away the class SB hidden. It just adds the class SB showing. And as we learned, if there are two classes and they are fighting, you know, like contradicting each other, the later one wins. So all I got to do is add one and it kind of cancels the earlier one. And that's all it's going to do. Add a class to the mega wrapper and tell it, are you hidden or, oh, you're also showing. Take over. Uh, and all the other children are going to behave accordingly, just like we've seen here in the CSS. For instance, the sidebar will behave differently, whether its parent it has the class hidden or its parent has the class showing. Then we're going to the page because it's also a moving part. Its width is 100 VW. It takes up the whole width. Here it is. Even when it's moving, it's still taking up the whole width. Only part of it is clipped, is, you know, truncated here. But it's not getting any narrower. It's just moved off screen. So it's always going to be as big as the viewport. Uh, it's going to be position fixed. It's at the top left, just like the sidebar. If something is too wide, I don't want to see a scroll bar. But if something is too... Um, Tall, I do want to see a scroll bar. It has a white background. Its height is as tall as the whole page. Its Z index is four because the Z index of the sidebar was three. I want to make sure that I can always see the page. And it has the same transition as the sidebar. So I'm going to also put a hot here and add the words make. Same as uh, transition on sidebar. In other words, if I want the whole thing to go slower, I will have to change both this and this. Let's experiment. If I want it to be really slow, like 4.5 seconds, I will change both of them to 4.5 seconds to ensure that they still look like they are moving together. Notice that the menu has its own independent look, but the sidebar and the page are now look, you know, moving at the same speed. So what I'm trying to say, we're going to see this a few more times, is that when I change transition speeds, I better be consistent and change it for all of them. So I'm changing both all of them right now to half a second. It's one of the things you'll have to do. Look at the strategy again, page, General instructions always. Then the page when its parent is hidden. I can even, you know, I'm, I'm basically copying this co this comment that's changing the words to page. It's like saying, hey, page, when your page, when your ancestor, notice I'm not saying direct parent because it's, it has to go two levels up to find the mega wrapper. Uh, when your ancestor has the class shown, uh, hidden, sorry. What will it do? It will just show at zero, zero, zero. It's, you know, it's at just occupying the whole page. But when the parent, let's copy 
this. When its ancestor has the class showing, what does it mean it's showing? It's showing the sidebar, which means the page has to move aside. Page, when it, its ancestor has the class showing, move aside to make room for the sidebar. Now, this is going to be very easy to uh, experiment with. What if I change this number to 500? It'll move too much. Look at this. See how it moved 500? So again, there's got to be consistency between all those 300s. If I change that 300, I'd have to change it everywhere. So this is definitely hot. goes with all the quote-unquote 300s. Change them once, change all of them. Then the menu button itself, which I call the menu trigger. It's absolute, so it always stays at the top of wherever its parents is. This is its width and height just because the image is 53 by 50, so I made it size 53 by 50, so it looks nice. Notice the dot dot slash, why? Because in order to find it, it has to go one uh, folder up. The CSS is here, so this is the dot dot slash. Climb one folder up, and there you will find the sidebar images, and inside of that, it finds the menu icon. Um, uh, no repeat, Z index 999 on top of everything, and again, look at the transition. Um, What's the transition? Left and transform, because we're going to do two things to it. We're going to move it and we're going to rotate it. Um, again, I would say hot. You change its, this duration, you'd better change the duration of all of them. See how all of them right now? 0 0.5. Um, and again, this is the menu trigger always. Three styles, one when always, one when hidden, one when showing. So menu trigger, general or always. General stuff. Then menu trigger. I can simply copy the comment and just change it from the word page. So hey, menu trigger. When your granddaddy, the mega rapper, is saying we are hidden, which means the sidebar is not showing. Hey, icon. When its answer, ancestor is hidden, where is it going to be? Zero pixels from the left and rotate zero degrees. In other words, when it's hidden, let me make sure that it's saved. When it is hidden, it is all the way to the left and it's not rotated. But when its parent gets the style showing, I'm telling it to move here, a little more than 300 pixels because I want it to be outside, and it just rotated 180 degrees. Notice it's 303 because I want it to move a little more, and rotated 180 degrees. So this is, hey, icon, Icon when its answers it has the class SB showing. So the whole trick here is about changing one class to one item called the Mega Wrapper, and all the children are going, oh, what is granddaddy saying? Is it saying we're all hidden? Is it saying we're all showing? And behave accordingly. It's a strategy, by the way, that I learned from uh, WordPress. They use it a lot. Then we got the nav styles, but I think I'm going to stop this tutorial and do a part two for the CSS because I think we're about halfway there.